Summer by Ben Sound. Hey Richard, what's going on? How's it going? Yeah, I finally found a decent uh, Discord bot called Pulse that it can pipe in like a YouTube video or from Spotify. And there's like songs. This one's called like Summer by Ben Sound and it's like royalty free. You just have to like do accreditation. Uh, so that's a somewhat working solution. Cool. I like it. You're so creative. It would also be cool if I could just like pipe my desktop audio into discord via like a bot because then i could just like i could use that sound trap application to like make my own track of music and just play it and then have the audio like sent through a bot into the call i bet that's possible but i haven't seen how to do that yet <clears throat> oh i'm sure you're uh you're gonna figure it out there buddy yeah, you're gonna kind of do this mess. yeah it's all been pretty convenient so far. Like this crag bot is like working out pretty well. And <clears throat> there seems to be a lot of useful discord bots. There's even a discord bot. I think they're rolling it out slowly, but it's called Clyde. And Clyde is just like a chat GPT you know, style chat bot. And you can just type like at Clyde and then ask it anything. And it'll respond to you like in discord, wherever, whatever server you're in. Uh, that's like in, I haven't seen like the ability to use it yet, but that's kind of a cool feature. You could really ask it anything, or you could ask it for images or, or something, and it seems to be able to like do whatever the class, the typical chatbots can do. All right, yeah, I'll leave all that stuff up to you, man. <laughs> You're the tech whiz. So, guess yeah, what I did the, um, Monday? The art of living. Yeah. How was so all you, that? You were right. There was um, there was a lot of push for a course. Um, to be expected, but it was such a push that it, it took away uh, from the messaging a little bit. I mean, I was a bit distracted after the initial spew, and I missed Trent's um, message. Apparently, it was very powerful, but I just completely missed it because my, I, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I was there, like but your nothing guard. was... Yeah, your guard yeah. went up or something, yeah. Yeah, nothing was going, nothing was, I was hearing his words, but they just were just words. Nothing was connecting. So, yeah, you know, I'm like... It seemed that, from what I sort of suspect, it seemed like like Matthew McConaughey has, like, Instagram followers, and essentially he, like, I guess he was paid money, I assume, by, like, the two other guests, like, the two other gurus that he was partnering with, like, Tony someone, Tony Robbins or something, and the other guy. And Dean, they basically yeah. just... I think they just wanted like Matthew McConaughey's audience to be funneled into like a pitch for their course because I think it's known that like those other like I don't I think Matthew McConaughey is doing it for whatever reason but the other two guys at least are they like funnel people through their course and that's that's their whole business. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, know, I, I don't know how McConaughey got caught up in it. I'm sure like Matthew McConaughey what? has some truth to his message or he's maybe he's like actually practicing what he preaches, but. Yeah, it's well, it's like I, I did see his body language when Dean was about to take over doing the uh, course spiel. So it wasn't even it wasn't even Matthew that was given the initial spiel. It was Dean, and Dean just like it was his baby. It was his idea to pitch, and he did it. And he and Matthew like left the screen as Dean was doing it. And I just like my feeling was like. They're just hijacking this. So, and I, I get it because they have the infrastructure. Matthew doesn't. So, how, how else are you going to reach 2.2, no, it's 2.4 million people? That's never been done before. That's, been the, that's the largest online gathering in the history of technology. So, it was really neat to be a part of that. Um, but that was only possible because these guys do that for a living. So, you know, I think a condition was is 
hey, Matthew, this is win-win. You use our infrastructure. We'll make a course for you. We'll put your face on it. Um, with You'll you know, get some profit from it. And you know, just go with the pitch. Let it happen. Just let it happen. And you'll get an opportunity to say your message. So I, I have a feeling that's what happened. And that's, I feel like because I felt that happen, it was sort of like taking away from the message for me. So I was, like I said, I was there, but I was like distracted by the whole thing. And a lot of people were pissed off. A lot of people are pissed off with the repetitiveness of, you know, the pushing for the course. Yeah, it is um, a, it's such a paradoxical message too, because like like the message in the beginning is like, you know, like don't let someone else live life for you or tell you how to live life, just live life directly yourself. And then, but then right after that, it's like, and then pay me to tell you how to live your life. But it's like, wait a minute, the, the message is to not pay someone to live my life for me. Like, you know, the message is like, you don't need things to be happy. You just need to be with family and be present. And then, but then like right after that to say like, and by the way, pay me money for my course where I tell, where I like, you know, take up your time and your money telling you how to not need to bot to pay other people for like courses in the future. It just seems like very like, how do they, how do they sell both of those things at once? You know, <laughs> like it's so it's there was so a, like contradictory. There was a lot of different takeaways and different messages and I still don't have the executive summary from it all. I, I can't sum all that up. Um, a lot of these things do seem like, uh, like rewording of existing things. Like it, I, it's no, it is. It one hundred percent is. Now I don't know if Matthew is inspired by another author, but um, an, um, a friend of mine attended, and he he said that you know a lot of the messaging comes from a nineteen fifties book. I'm just going to pull it up. I'm going to find it. Yeah, maybe not, probably, but maybe not even directly as well. Like, it's probably like other people took that stuff from the 1950s book and then someone else took it from them. And like Matthew McConaughey is like the, the fourth or the fifth person relaying this info. I saw on yeah. his Instagram, uh, he had one video on his Instagram where he was just talking about like making a to-do list for yourself every day and like putting like easy stuff, like stuff that's easy to check off on your to-do list so that you can check off things and feel good. And I remember like, I remember like, cause actually I think that is like a real thing that people can do. And I remember just hearing that, I think it was bullet journaling, like some, and I'm sure the bullet journaling guy got it, got the idea from somewhere else as well. But it was just this idea of like, it feels good to check things off a list. So, so make some easy stuff to get momentum going and then do the harder stuff. And, but it was like, he didn't really like give accreditation to wherever it came from. He sort of pitched it as if like he came up with it and, and it was like, but it's like, oh, I mean, that's, that's like a pretty basic idea that's been out there. It's not like I needed, I didn't need to hear it from him. I just needed to like search anywhere on the internet. Like, what can I do to motivate myself? And that would probably come up on, on any list that I find. It's like, nothing's like revelatory or like packaged in a new way. It's just like the same, the same like self-help stuff packaged, you know, kind of, some of it is for free. Some of it is buying a book. Some of it is a course. Like, it's kind of weird, uh that all of this info is out there for free. Like, it's like, take control of your life. Just go find the same info for free. You know, don't rely on like a, don't pay for an expensive course to just deliver you like what a single web search or, you know, could just list off. It's kind of strange. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I did find the book yeah. there. I did find the book. It's called Success. Yeah. Success Through a Positive Mental Attitude. Uh, there's an audio book that he sent me. And the uh, what yeah that that phrase the success through positive attitude it reminds me of like like a more modern version of that is called like the secret there's this book called the secret which is kind of like a scammy book and it's basically this idea that if you think positively about something enough you can just cause that thing to happen like uh, you can force something good to happen by just like thinking about it enough and, and wanting it enough. 
and then but of mm. course then the other side is like if you know if that strategy doesn't work then you just immediately blame the person like they weren't doing it right or something and so then it's like this you can never like disprove it and uh you know and then of course it's all just in favor of selling this book called the secret and then there's even more modern variations on that like i think on tiktok there's like a viral video going around where people are like you know saying that like like claiming themselves to be like lucky people and if you if you say that you're a lucky person and lucky things happen to you then lucky things will happen to you or something like that and it's sort of like all this it's always yeah. like there's always like a new trend that's just repeating the same idea of like you know it's just like if you if you're open to opportunities that arise of course you'll you know if you walk around thinking like something good positive is going to happen today then you'll just be ready to take whatever opportunity comes your way and people will like people of course will sense like the positivity they'll want to be around you if you're just positive and happy and that will bring you more networking more connections like it's all just like very intuitive uh there's no like you know maybe no, like, it, secret it, or something yeah maybe some people are are turned off by people who are too optimistic they're just anomalies and people don't know how to that people don't know how to process that if you're too friendly and too kind um, they'll think something's off with you or you're, you're trying to manipulate them. That's, that's where people are at these days. They're so guarded. You would think that like just the power of the smile, uh, the smile can disarm people really, but it has to be a genuine smile. It has to come from deep within and, and that can take down people's guard. But some people are just so guarded that there's no getting through no matter what you do. Um, oh, and, and the author of the book is called William Clamal. Stone. So it's from 1959, and yeah, my my friend says that there's a lot of reoccurring themes there. You know, um, I did. There was a lot of what he was saying that resonated with me that I've kind of already figured out. One thing that I liked is, you know, it's like what is how you say carpe carpe diem seize the moment, seize yeah. the day, and yeah, that's kind of. Dead yeah, they, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of like Matthew's approach. You know, something's in front of him, and he wants to do it. He'll do it. Um, whether it's going to yield something small or grand, it's going to be a little bit of work or a lot of work. He does it, and you know, he doesn't let fear get in the way, unless it's something that's going to cause him harm. You know, I mean, obviously, there's a bit of a common sense check there. Like, listen to your gut. If it's something that's going to hurt you, it's you know, then don't do it. Um, but, you know, I've been, been looking at that. I've been more open to, and not because of him, but because in my mind, I feel the solution in order to overcome fear, which is created by the subconscious to keep you safe and in your comfort zone. The only way to break through that from all of my experience and my wisdom throughout life is to take action. And that means pushing outside your comfort zone and pushing out um, from your fear. Um, so like small stuff, uh, and, and here's the thing, you get momentum doing this. So I, I was, uh, initially afraid to sign up for the sideburn, the burning man. And I did it. And then I was afraid to join a camp and then I did it. And then, um, there was training involved and I joined the training and then I realized like, you know, great facilitator. No idea what I was getting myself into, like introductions, um, scenarios, a lot of interaction, a lot of FaceTime, completely uncomfortable with the whole thing. But I did it. And I got to the point, too, where like we had to do a scenario where, you know, one of us had to create a story for three minutes. One of us had to be an active listener and one was like an outside listener. Oh, I, I almost... That. Yeah, it was a great exercise. I almost ran the fuck away. I almost signed off, man. Because of fear. But I had to like say, like, you know, let's just let it happen. Let it happen. And and what was part of the, the reason for the fear was because the direction wasn't the clearest. I was wrapped around the axle about creating a story for three minutes. But what I was like, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna show up. And I did it. I showed up and we talked and I was like, no guys, I'm uncomfortable doing the first role because I cannot fabricate an authentic story for three minutes and, and it be real. I can't lie to you like that. 
And one guy's like, no, I got it. I have a real story that I want to share. And I was like, well, me between the other person, I'm like, what do you want to do? Would you like to be the listener or would you like to be, you know, the outside person, the fly on the wall? She picked the fly on the wall and I was like, okay, I, I will be an active listener, which was a, a role that is a strength of mine. And that's another thing that I got from this um, event. Uh, and it, it's interesting. Uh, Matthew mentioned that we should focus on our strengths and put energy into that because that's what's going to bring us the most joy and give us momentum. If we put all our energy into our weaknesses, sure, our weaknesses will get a bit better and maybe they won't be as weak, but that's going to suck a lot of energy out of us. I mean, that, this is my interpretation of it. The main takeaway was invest energy into, into your strengths. And active listening is a skill. That course did zero to prepare me to be a good active listener. There, there, was, there was no best principles. There was no, this is what you do. Like, this is how you be an active listener. They're just like, go and do it. So, you know, it was lacking in that regard. But I passed on what I knew after the fact. So not only did I go through this scenario, which I was going to run away from, which is ridiculous. But, I, you know, I was going to, my fear gets so strong that I just want to run away. Not only did I did this scenario in front of the entire group of like 40 people, you know, I, I put my face out there and I said, you know, active listening is a skill that you have to learn. And I did the active listening role. And, you know, a lot of the times we feel compelled to respond or to give advice. And that's not usually what the other person wants when they're talking. And so I actually taught them the piece of the course that was missing, and I added value that way. And I would not have been able to do that if I wasn't present to share that. And I didn't feel scared to do that. I felt compelled to do it. I wanted to do that. And I felt confident doing it because it was one of my strengths. So... I think it's all fascinating how I'm realizing this. But then when I hear Matthew like, articulating these principles, these things that you know, we should follow, I'm like, you know, never put that to words before, but it makes a lot of sense to me, really. Yeah, I like the, this idea of like, like when you have a group of strangers and the challenge is sort of like get them to bond with each other. I think it is important, like, you know, if you can give people like, some people in the group permission to be really vulnerable and like a good way to do that is like you know a three minute authentic story that shares something that like it, that makes you feel like sort of vulnerable in front of other people and then like there's a powerful thing with that because then the other people you've given them like something vulnerable about yourself so it motivates them to then reciprocate with like something vulnerable about themselves and mm -hmm. then you feel like a stronger like you feel a connection, you can trust that person a little bit more because you know something about them that they wouldn't, they might not want you to spread around. Like you've sort of exchanged valuable things that you are trusting with these people in this group. And there's, it, it's like a, I feel it's like a very like human way to create a sense of like people are a team and you know things about them that uh, makes them feel more real and like unique and stuff. And that's just kind of cool. Uh, and I like, I don't know, I like that idea. It feels like, like that, and that's, I guess, it feels like there's something there, like, you could almost start, like, a trend where, like, you give people instructions, like, how to turn on their webcam, how to turn on their mic, how to film, like, a YouTube video of, like, them sharing, like, something vulnerable about themselves, but then just, like, put that publicly on YouTube, you know? And that's very interesting. Like, imagine if everybody you met, you could go on YouTube and see like a video of them being like very like open and vulnerable. That would be kind of interesting. Like, you know, that is yeah. be, like sharing like, and then, yeah. Like imagine if everybody had like, like if that's what like social media was, was just like people confessing like various things. Like maybe there could be various levels of privacy on the videos. Like if you're the closer, uh, they've given you like more friend permissions, like the closer you are to an actual friend, with them in real life, you could get more permissions to see like more and more uh, like honest like videos. 
And, this rings uh, a bell for me. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Once upon a time, you know, I was, someone was talking about social media and how damaging it is. Because what you see is the best of someone's life and what oh, they're yeah. doing. But what you don't yeah. see is, you know, the sacrifice behind it, the, the money spent, the things that had to be given up. And, you're, and the suggestion was, it's like, you know, you really want to add value to people. Don't flex your experience and show just the highlights. Give the full picture. Yes, I took a stance to do this trip to Costa Rica. I was terrified to do it. I had to break through anxiety. I had to renew my passport. I had to pay uh, $2,500 round trip. You know, I had to pay for the yoga retreat, which was 3000 for the entire trip. Total cost of 5500 right off the bat and then there's additional costs um you know and, and share any of the hardships any of the challenges that went into planning that trip that you know it's not just all easy there's work that goes into it there's resources yeah. that have to go into it. give the full balanced picture because then it creates the sense of realism and it's not all just a dream that people are living like there, there, there is work that has to go into it. And I heard that suggestion one time and I was like, you know, I really like that. And I have yet to do it. But it's been a long time since I've been on a fancy trip. So I think it's about time that I do that. Um, but yeah, I find myself getting sucked into social media, the, the movies, the videos, and you know, feeling envy, feeling like I'm missing out, like I'm not doing enough. And, you know, that's not, a, that's not a healthy feeling. It's not a good feeling. Entertaining videos and the memes and the pictures and all that stuff, but um, the loneliness that it creates, it's, um, it's not good. And I'm, I'm pretty confident when I say it impacts a lot of people. Yeah, I like sort of some of the, like, people do these like little parody social media things like because there's like um there's like a a common post like people will take a picture of themselves with all their friends like laughing like in a in a restaurant or at an outing or something and people mm. will do like parody versions of that where like they'll just take like a photo of themselves against a wall and then they'll say like you know like oh all my friends are like laughing like just off camera or whatever uh and like they'll sort of joke like they'll sort of like clearly be like putting on a like a skit or something where they're sort of like, like the purpose of the social media post is like clearly like everyone knows, like they're just obviously pretending that they're hanging out with friends. Like they're probably home alone. Like you can see like the wall in the background or something. And they're <laughs> like, you know, they'll be like, Oh, just like hanging out, watching a movie with all my friends. Like, uh, they're all off camera. Like they're also laughing, like, <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, uh, like it's supposed to be obviously like, uh, transparently like untrue, but it's funny because it's like even if your friends are in the room like it's like you're not really hanging out with them if you're making that like post in that moment like you're just focusing on broadcasting like to other people that you're hanging out and not actually living in the moment and so like you've like you've sort of like it's like how valuable was the time to you if it's more valuable to like share it than to actually experience it or something uh and it's it's just funny when people like point that out in like a by using like parody and because then you can go full circle and be like, could we just, you know, like, could we just post on social media, like whatever we're doing, but make it sound like interesting in that way. Like, you know, we're like, we're like failing to like make spaghetti or like, we're just like tired. So we took a nap and like put that on social media as if we're all like proud of ourselves because we should be for like just living life and sleeping if we want or, uh, you know, making like crummy pasta and eating it because we're hungry <laughs> like uh like sort of like amping up the value of just these like very simple activities with like nothing grand about them uh it's kind of interesting i don't know i feel like yeah i feel like there's something to like unlock there about just, you know it might have you know, already been done it might already be out there yeah and if it hasn't, man, then you can do it. Cause, um... I was actually thinking, I, I was thinking, like, I started filming a bit because I was going to make, like, a, a cooking video. 
but it would be a video about how to just how to like make quote unquote like raw carrots and i was going to like i was going to like film myself like walking up and grabbing like a bag of carrots in the grocery store and then like you know scanning them for the checkout coming home showing like the bag being cut open you t- you like take out a carrot you skin it with the little thing and then you just like chop it up and put it on a plate and then like i would have like the final shot of like you know just this plate of carrots that i've skinned like being on a plate and then i would like eat it and i was going to have like that be like a cooking you know video as if there's something like because it's actually good like it's good to eat carrots people don't do it and so it's funny to think like you know it's like you know what i'm going to teach people how to eat carrots which is like a very simple thing like there couldn't be anything anything similar than just like getting a carrot obviously you don't want to eat the skin maybe you do like you got to shave it off and that's like that's the extent of the video like the lesson but it's like but if you watch that video it almost does make you think like it's like yeah that is easy like even though everyone kind of must think that already that like that's got that's got to be like the easiest thing there's no cooking involved or whatever uh but still it's like it's like a reminder almost of like remember like it, like watching this video of this really easy thing is actually like funny how easy it is but shouldn't that then shouldn't we then think like uh like if i find this video funny because of how easy this task is why why don't i do it you know like what's the hard part cuz everyone is like too tired like they'll just get takeout or fast food or something you might be surprised richard on how incapable people are these days um <laughs> then the you, video is you, actually useful <laughs> but it's also hilarious at the same time for like our generation yeah. but for the younger generation it probably could go viral like, <laughs> because they're just like you know this is super useful knowledge like actually how to peel and cut a carrot properly you, you can pass on some good tricks too so there's a dude that i, I just started following that um, basically teaches you how to not throw away a lot of stuff that we would throw away. For instance, like leftover pineapple bits, um, bruised, well, severely bruised apples, rotten apples, bananas, how to, you know, keep bananas riper longer just by putting the, the top that connects all the bananas in water like upside down oh, yeah. it can keep them riper ripe longer like i didn't know any of this shit um it goes on and on about like how to make your own orange plant tree he, he, he did oranges i didn't see it through to the end he did watermelon he like how to um grow your own watermelon using an existing seed and then, you know, instead of throwing out the skin and all that, the pulp, not the pulp, the, the skin, the part that we normally don't eat for the watermelon, he basically, like, grinds it all up in a blender and, and, like, I think he adds something to it. And he's like, you know, there's so many benefits to consuming this, so much fiber, which is good for you. And if you do it this way that he shows you, it's actually healthy. Like, all these little hacks, um, like, Bones, for instance, you know, you have yourself, um, you know, a few chicken legs. You you boil the oh, the bones. Like yeah. He's like, I'm not making a broth, so he boils it. It allows the skin, the flesh, to come off easily. You dry the bones. You bake the bones. You grind the bones up to create bone meal, <laughs> and then you use the bone meal in your plants. I'm just like, what the fuck? It's amazing. <laughs> also, ginger. As well, he teaches you, you know, take a little bit of ginger. This is how you nurture it to, and now create your own ginger. I, I want to start doing this shit. And this is stuff that's like, probably for other people, you know, common knowledge back when we knew how to grow shit. But you know, it's lost knowledge. And your idea. Yeah, I want like the beginner. Like that's already like that. The stuff that guy's doing is like intermediate or something. Yeah, but yours is want- like. Yeah, mine's like how to eat an orange, and it's like, like yes. you just go to the store, you buy an orange, and then like, I could I love it. You know, I'd it's be like, genius. you know, I'm like wearing like a chef outfit. It's like I like to just uh, loosen the skin, like by like rolling the orange, and then like get my thumb in there, and then you just peel off the skin, and then you just like eat it, <laughs> and like there's all this like Rich- Richard, 
advanced you got an idea <laughs> man you, you got an idea you really do i've never seen anything actually, like it what's interesting is like these video like i already like i don't eat enough like oranges or bananas or carrots so these this is actually content that like i want where like it it guilts me into like it makes me you know it's like content that makes me confront how easy eating an orange is but then this realization that i never do it and almost like that you know it should be embarrassing like you know to watch this video and be like yeah that's how easy it is and like yeah i don't do it <laughs> and so like uh but here's the other part too so you do that you can teach you know cutting techniques how to access it correctly whatever like peeling like how to peel a banana properly the only reason why i know that is because i saw a meme of an angry monkey saying you're opening it from the wrong end <laughs> And, and he's pissed off. I mean, I didn't realize you open it from the other side. You just don't know what you don't know, right? That seems um, like kind of like a, like a super optimization, though, because like, like sometimes it doesn't work when you pull the, the long end, but, and like maybe the uh, pinching the, the other end is better, but I feel like I feel like, it's, the not like it's, almost like, it's almost like you could make a video about it, like intentionally opening the banana the wrong way to like remind ourselves about like how not everything has to be like optimized and perfect like we could almost like you know you could like open it some really like like how to open a banana the right way and then just show like you like open it from the middle you like push your thumbs in and like open it from the middle and then like as it and, like can say that like you know that way is just as correct as like any other way uh, yeah, but it's videos. messy. So you can show the different ways, but you can show the optimal way. But here's the other cool thing too: is you can talk about the health benefits of each of the food items, the the vitamin content, how it's good for us, how many we should have on a daily basis, things like that. I mean, if you were to do that, not only are you combining basic, basic skills, which is hilarious, but you also have a nutrition component that you know people can take away from your video they may not have known before um yeah it's fun i feel like the uh like there's so many things where it's like the benefit is like just the thing that you didn't eat like instead like like the the nutritional value of an orange is just that you didn't eat like the other snack that you would have eaten had you not eaten an orange i feel like there's a video in there where like you could sort of say like you know like if you're going to eat something, put all, put your three choices like on the counter, like the orange, the chocolate bar, like the crackers, and then like, then make a conscious selection, like from those three options, you know, after like peeling the orange or something, you know, and like, it's sort of like, are you going to let this orange that's already peeled go bad? Or are you going to like eat this chocolate bar and, and then come back to the orange after it's like hard and weird and stuff. And then it's like, you know, then it's like you're you're creating this environment where it it's nonsensical not to eat the orange, rather than like, you know, the chocolate bar is like in your cupboard, but the orange you have to like go to the store and buy it. So then you decide like, so the choice is not like a fair choice or something. Well, I'll tell you this: I would eat the orange, the chocolate, and the crackers if it was in front <laughs> of me, Richard. So yeah, anything that's a thing for me. Anything that's in my cupboard, I'll eventually eat it. So then the. It, you you never want to have like infinite chocolate in your cupboard. You always want to have like just one thing so that no, you can run. or a bag of like Cape Cod fucking chips from Costco. I got that for uh, hosting Ben tomorrow. Big bag. It's already fucking <laughs> gone, man. I already crushed it all. I'm like, oh, you know, just a little bowl here, a little bowl there, a little bowl here, and I see you no know, four bowls later. It's like, hey, I can't handle any more salt. I'm gonna be sick. Um. Yeah, I definitely do. See yeah, that. I can't have that shit in my house, man. And I, I know better and I keep doing it thinking, OK, I'm going to save it for hosting. And I'm just like, I'm bored. I want to eat chips. They sell so. these little um, like jars with like time locks where you can you put something like in the jar and you you put the lid on, but the lid like locks and you can set a timer for like it will not like unlock for a set amount of time. And that's actually, I think that's pretty effective. Those little jars. Yeah. I'd probably smash the jar open if I really wanted it bad enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's better not to have that shit in the house. 
You know, so, you know, good ideas and think about it. Uh, I'm sure you can make it materialize. You like producing content. Why not? I mean, get your face yeah, out the other, there, Richard. The other hack for me is that like, uh, like I, I should just, you know, shoot all this footage and just make as many of them as possible with like as low quality as possible first, just to prove to myself like that, like just to sort of get myself across the boundary of like, it's already made, it's already out there. And, you know, if I like it, I'll make a better version or something like rather than, you know, I always I used to fall much more into this idea of like, I need to make sure this is like perfect, you know, if I'm going to make it. But now it's like I'm just going to make it bad, like almost intentionally and and then just put it out there. And then like then it's now a problem of like if I want it to be good, I'll just make make a slightly better version rather than like feel like having nothing out there and feeling like I'm just waiting until I can make the perfect thing or something. I mean, that can be your style. Come up with a style, Richard. So like, for instance, um, what's it called? Casually explained. The guy uses monologues and he has a very like monotone voice. When he first started off, his voice was like just monotone and he would go through his little skit. And then as I watched his more recent skits you know there's some sarcasm there's certain delays like the way he delivers it is much more entertaining like it's hilarious and uh you know he likes to trash himself and put himself down he's like <laughs> i can't even do the example i mean it's just i wouldn't do it any justice but that's his style that's what he's done i don't even think he's ever shown his face but he's picked the theme you went with it and it gradually it evolved just a tiny bit, like his delivery. So, you know, figure out for yourself how you want to how you want to approach this. So you, you can go with a, like a low quality retro look, but and like you talk in a certain way, your your jokes are like flat, or you know, you're very serious about what you do. And then nutritional content is, you know, very serious as well. But you're like, you're so serious about this mundane task that it's funny. However you want to shape it. I mean, I would have that um, consistent theme throughout. Because human beings just, you know, we, we like consistency. And I mean, that, that's how you can be remembered. And I mean, just a suggestion. Yeah, my original, <laughs> I think I would do like no talking at first. Like it would just be like jump cuts between like three or four second clips like you know like grabbing the bag in the store cutting the bag like you know sort of like opening the apartment door cutting the bag open like just like three three second clips of like like snip snip and then like carrots on the thing like you know shaving one carrot showing the carrots shaved like and like the sound of just like the knife sort of like chopping you know the ends off or something uh and just like just like jump like sort of almost like a fast like and the video would be like done within like 15 seconds of and it would sort of tell this story of like you know like you know sort of like purchase the like door open uh bag open like carrots chopped and then like crunch and then like it just ends like and it would be like the that's that would be the my first target it would be like make like the tightest video that sort of tells this story of like a guy like within 15 like it makes it seem like within 15 seconds, you're going to have that bag of carrots and you're going to be eating the carrots, you know, before you can even think, you're like, you've learned the whole video kind of thing. Uh, All right. I mean, I you seem to have what you want to do in your mind already. But, you know, offline... Yeah, I could expand it. Yeah, if you're off, offline, you want to talk about it some more. I mean, this is the beautiful thing about brainstorming. I mean, what I'm reading from this four-hour work week book is, you know, before you come up with a product, make sure there's a market. But in this case... You know, I think that this could take off. I think this could be very entertaining. But, you know, if you want to make sure you're not wasting your time, you, know, you can ask some friends if, you, if they think it's a good idea. And if they're like, you know, that's a really good idea, then you, know, you talk to maybe 50 of your friends, you know, 95% say it's good, then proceed. And if they have suggestions, maybe, you know, check them out and uh, consolidate their ideas and, you know, pick a way forward. So. Yeah, I like when yeah, I like feedback. Feedback that brings me like closer to like the thing that I want because often like, you know, I won't have like all the ideas like I need like brainstorming feedback from other people, but then I I like incorporate it if 
it cre if it creates like an even more powerful like thing that I would want. Because really, uh, I focus on like whatever I make. I want it to be like a thing that's going to be valuable to me. Like, like I'll stumble across this video sometime in the future, and it will motivate me to like go buy carrots again. And if that's all it ever does is get me to eat carrots on one occasion, then it's like kind of worth it, you know. And uh, and like the less time I spend making it, uh, the better, because then I'll just I can make even more stuff that you know, will have some effect on me later when I, like, forget these things and then find them again or something. Uh, the, the other extreme is, like, instead of, like, a 15-second jump cut, Carrots make, like, a six-hour, like, documentary, but it's still, like, just about, like, it still tells the same story, but, like... Way, way, like, way, way, way off. <laughs> like, going, lavish, like, my, my Yeah, you're, you're going off in this other direction now. You got to keep in mind that the attention span of, you know, people this day and age, there's probably um, a range. If it's too short, people are going to be like, what the fuck just happened? And if it's too long, you're going to lose their interest. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, saying I would... that just because I recently I watched like a six hour review of like, uh, like an anime dating sim for like the one of the early like PlayStations. Uh, it was Tokameki. Toki Meki Memorial or something like that, and uh, I forget the guy's name at the moment, but he he made like this like six hour documentary where he like just dissects the whole game and he played it like fourteen times like in preparation and it was like this Sounds... master yeah it was just like it's like it gets like all philosophical and like deep and everything and like you really, sounds brutal uh, it was kind of crazy how I you can kind of like fall into those things where like like you know I'll start watching it I. I'll be doing like I'll play a video game partially while watching it. I'll like I'll be like doing some like pixel art or something as I'm watching another section or just listening to it or something and or I'll take a break, I'll come back to it the next day and but then you I just you feel like you walk away with such a strong like emotional connection with a video like that where like you you feel like you really you like like you end up learning about like the core personality and everything of the narrator just through this watching this review of this video game that like is actually in Japanese completely. It's not even translated to English. You can't even like, like the documentaries in English or whatever, but the, the game has never been translated. Uh, so it's kind of even funnier that like, you can't even go play this game. Like the review is just like all you get uh, in terms of engagement with the game, but you feel like you sort of learned something like profound through it or something. So something completely irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, you're catering to a very specific market if you're doing that, um, or, you know, consumer. Um, don't, you know what? Don't let me, don't let my naysaying stop you. And this is another takeaway from um, Matthew. Don't let the naysayers stop you. You know, don't listen to the negativity. If, if that's something you want to do, Richard, then you do it, man. Um, you know how my, my, my message just changed there? I'm skeptical, yeah. but I'm just one person. There's 7 billion people on the planet. There could be a good percentage of people that actually would eat that up. Now, however, six hours about how to cut a fucking carrot, Richard, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually, I, I wouldn't for me, do it's that, like, but... uh, like I, uh, it's actually like an interesting challenge. Like if someone said, you know, take this, take, uh, make a cooking video of like how to just like, eat carrots raw, but make it six hours and find a way to, you know, to make it entertaining. That's like an interesting challenge. Like that's like an endurance thing as well for like editing challenge and all that. Like there's like to find, cause I think there should be like in terms of mindfulness, there should be meaning, deep meaning in anything that we do. And so then it's actually, it's like a, it could be sort of like a philosophical journey for the creator to go on to just find a way to make humans get entertainment get six hours of entertainment out of this basic thing like uh that's kind of a fun activity whether or not it produces a good video or not it's just like a i feel like you'd learn something about cinemography and narrative and uh like storytelling through the the challenge of trying to make that story interesting <laughs> yeah i like the idea of teaching stuff to people like skills something very basic adding nu the nutritional piece to it and i you know you could actually just um 
narrate yourself too. So as you're going to the store and doing all that stuff, like you just take the video and then separately another layer, you, you do the narrating. But yeah, I think you should um, be seen and heard in your videos if you're a content maker. Um, like, if you're the one doing the content, then yeah, you're the one that's going to be seen. If you're doing this little monologue, like casually explained, then you don't show your face and you have that element of mystery, um, which I think was quite neat as well. So, But, you know, that's the thing is what I like about you is that, you know, you're willing to try new things and put yourself out there like it doesn't seem like you're held back by fear um and you know i, I really appreciate that because a lot of people are choked up by fear and they won't even take the initial steps but you're just like i'm gonna put myself out there i'm gonna try to do this um and, you know and keep doing that because there's a lot to learn by trying new things and you're not going to learn anything if you don't ever try right so yeah that curiosity I, I feel like, uh, is good. It's interesting how, like, there's these two messages of, like, you know, like, put ourselves out there and don't let the naysayers hold us down. And I feel like what's interesting is, like, that that's, like, good advice on its own. But I feel it can't, it is, like, w that advice can be, like, weaponized, too, by these, like, these course, like, selling people where, like, like they they might say like put yourself out there try this course because you know it's like it's like oh are you scared you this course won't be successful then get rid of your fear you know and push through and try this course and then they say like if your family tells you don't spend the money on the course they're naysayers and they're trying to hold you down and you see how like they they can kind of spin these things where they start saying like you know if anyone tells you that this is a scam and you shouldn't do it they're trying to hold you down and they're afraid of your success and like and you like and then like if you're afraid of committing this money then are you really ready to have success like if you're not chasing it you know and they start mm. to like they start to like twist like they twist these lessons that start out good but they start using it to like get in get inside your decision loop and like and sort of push you into an area yeah. where like yeah like if you have a chance to think about it you're like well like you know i could just take the message and do what i want with it for free i don't need to be like run through this like uh, mechanism but like it's interesting how there needs to be like you know it needs to be like some kind of foundation of like put ourselves out there and don't let the naysayers hold us down but only if it's 100 percent like in our self-interest like you know if it's like if we're getting a constant return on investment and we're we're happy for it and it's not harming us that's the thing that has to be constantly there is like you know never not like working for someone else or harming ourselves or losing track of our original goals. We have to like have this foundation of like thing, you know, we have to be like getting value from the journey every step of the way. And if we're not, then maybe we're being sort of led, uh, you know, by someone else on a journey of like their journey being like sort of exploited or something. And we think we're like getting led towards some payoff, but actually like, there's no, there's never any, I feel like that's an interesting thing. Like there's never any payoff in the end. It's just like the journey itself is worth it. Like the, the challenge, the suffering, the stuff like that's all, uh, you know, should be sort of the, yeah, the experience, yeah. the knowledge that you get from yeah. it. And yeah, when so yeah. So then if someone says like, you know, they'll just like sell you the answer, it's like, well, they could give you quote unquote, the answer for money and save you the time. But like really the journey is like you have to go through the the pathfinding and like the self like realization and you know discover who you are that takes that takes an amount of time and you can't like no one can like fast forward that for you and you know because they can't like help you experience time faster to like get you through there it's just like a it's like a life experience takes a certain amount of time uh and that's kind of an interesting like you know and yeah it's we should just, I guess we can like live the fastest we can live is like one second at a time. There's no, like, you can't like live faster than that for any amount of money or something or slower. Yeah. No time is, um, our most important resource. We don't seem to realize that. And we gotta, you, know, you can't speed it up. You can't slow it down. We just have what we have. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were some thoughts that popped in as you were talking there. And, um, you know, just, you know, circling back to 
them trying to get in your decision making loop. That's that's what happened. And I think that's what really threw me off is like they, they teach you this stuff and they're like, you know, you should do this course and continue the journey and you know, don't let the naysayer stop you kind of thing. Like that's that's what I, that's what I was hearing. And that 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 really fucking that irked me, man. I didn't I didn't like that. That's almost almost manipulation to me. Yeah, and it's um, manipulation of like a vulnerable segment of population, like people who are lost and and defeated and looking for purpose. And it's uh, it's kind of yeah, it's scary that like that those people are being fed that message, and a lot of them are not ready to like stand up and and get themselves out of it. They're just gonna like blind, maybe blindly follow, unfortunately, or something. Yeah, I've seen some posts on that group of them posting their bank account balances, and they have uh-huh. zero dollars. And, and, and they're checking and they're saving. Now, it could be another account. Uh, but, you know, I've seen quite a few where it's like, you know, mother of six kids. I have no money to my name. Everything goes to raising my family. So it's like, wow. You know, me being who I am, I had to offer a little perspective saying like, yeah, but there's people with like $10,000 credit card debt. So, you know, you're not doing too bad. And your family is, you get six kids. I mean, that's, I mean, family's priceless, man. Like, that's amazing. So, you know, they, they didn't need that dose of perspective, but it, it's just, it's not all, it's not all bad. Like, they don't realize yeah, how I guess bad I, it Yeah, I guess get. that's the, maybe that's a little bit like the power of positive thinking. Like, you know, like they, it would be nice if they could have more money and, and a better job and stuff like that just granted to them somehow. But then if they... I feel like that maybe is the lesson of like, no matter, like, I mean, they, it's like the one lesson is like, maybe don't go on Facebook and feel bad about yourself and make posts that make you feel bad. It's just like, maybe just like practice, you know, whatever little amount of stuff you have, be grateful for it. And that is something you can control. And that means you can be as happy as the happiest person, you know, regardless of how defeated your situation is, like objectively, you can still feel happy whatever's happening around you kind of and uh maybe that's a little bit the message like if you can just like yeah it's weird that they charge money for a course like that but it's just basically it's just like just you know force yourself to smile and then like studies have shown that like if you just do the physical act of smiling you will feel happier like just by by doing that like yeah and as i mentioned you'll disarm people's defenses too like if he, they yeah. see you smiling as you're walking by and you're genuine with your smile, like if you, not just like a forced one, but like if you can make it look real, um, that can warm people up. I mean, they'll be more inclined to greet you. You know, the other, the other part I got from this thing was um, it's, it's like it's willpower, really. It comes down to willpower. and you can hope all you want. You can dream all you want, but it's you got to take action. And you got to keep pushing even when things are hard. And get up when you fall. And continue to try new things, even if you're not successful. I mean, even the act of trying new things takes courage. I mean, we're so terrified of rejection that we won't even take this first step. Like, you know, approaching somebody who's attractive from the opposite sex. A lot of people are so afraid of rejection, they won't even, like, talk to them. Um, and that, that book there, uh, The 4-Hour Work Week, actually has a challenge. You know, go approach somebody and ask for their number. Not to get their number to call them to date them, but just to work through that discomfort and to get used to putting yourself on the spot and the more you do it, the easier it gets. And that's the lesson. Like you can push through that discomfort and become proficient at something. Now, you would think like, oh, you know, focus on your weaknesses and perhaps your communication is your weakness. Not so much in this case. This is you're held back because of fear of rejection. And that's something you got to work through. And, you know, there will be failures. People don't like that word, but failure is just, it's a word. It's like you're not successful in meeting your objective, whatever the definition is. 
people say it's a learning opportunity. Sure. But from failure, you get learning opportunities. You get experience. And, you know, as long as you're, you're picking yourself back up and continuing to push forward, that, that's what's important. But that takes willpower. How else are you going to keep getting back up? You got to want something bad enough. There has to be a reason, a goal, a purpose. So, like, you know, it's not just having, it's not just having a goal or a dream just for the sake of having it. It's... It's something that's really tied to you and something that you believe in and that you really, truly want. And I think if we really, truly want something with all our heart, that's where our willpower is going to come from. And if we can break through fear, take action, and learn from the little steps, the little missteps that we take, we keep moving forward using that willpower We'll get to our destination. We're bound to. Right? Yeah, I guess I so mean, in that, it's important that, it's important, like you were saying before, like we may fail uh, every, like we may fail completely and, you know, we, we may do all that, have the right willpower and still fail. And I think it's important though to like say that's all right also. Uh, and because we see a lot of people fail or we see all those, those people posting on Facebook, like they're quote unquote failing. Uh, but I would say it's important not to like, it's important not to view them as like people who don't have enough willpower. You know, it's like victim blaming, like, uh, like we should sort of say like, you know, if they, if they are like, we should give them the benefit of the doubt. Like those people on Facebook posting, they probably are doing the willpower thing and they're probably still trying and they're probably not giving up. And it just, what, for whatever reason, it's not working out for them. But that doesn't mean that they, like, they failed. It means they, like, they've failed like, so far. Uh, and maybe they can, will continue to fail forever until they're dead or something. But even that is fine, probably. Like, they just ha weren't lucky enough to have success. But they were doing all the right like, ingredients. Like, they never made a mistake. Uh, they just uh, never the got lucky. Yeah. Were they doing the right thing? So that's tough though. Uh, cause what is the right could, thing? Yeah. The, the difficulty is anyone who fails, you could always say, well, they just didn't do it right. And then you'd never like, it's almost like we, like we could just say like the way to succeed is to have willpower. And if you don't, if you have willpower and you don't succeed, you didn't have like the right kind of willpower. And we can, that means it's like impossible to disprove that like willpower, uh, works or whatever. Because it's not like, you know, let's get 100 people in a room. They all have willpower. They all try to do a thing. And 50% of them, like, fail. It, could we say, like, Yo, oh, those people just didn't do it right. But the actual method, like, the, the willpower thing works or whatever. Uh, like, I think the scientific thing would be, like, well, we have to call into question whether or not, like, uh, the, it's a fair system or the willpower thing actually works or something. Uh, yeah, it seems like the willpower thing seems like an effective way to move towards a goal. But I feel like we just don't, we want to be careful not to like flip it around and, and then blame people for like doing it wrong or something, it, you know, like blame the people and defend the idea. We should say we should like figure out a better system or something. Ah, uh, yes. Have an accountability. Yeah. yeah. People, yeah, can be unpredictable They're, when it comes to like, let's say, um, having a product and trying to sell it. If you continue to make a product first and then try to sell it and without determining that there's a market, you will probably keep failing. You know, there has to be like trial, like a testing of the market to see if there's a market first. And this is coming from someone that has done this before, um, the guy from the book. So determine there's a market by doing testing before you pull your resources into creating a product. And that's from experience. And he had to make the mistake of creating a product first and then selling it to realize, you know, he, did, he, did, he had zero success. He spent all this time, 500 hours, developing this great product that no one ever used. And then he went to university and he put up this advertising for uh, speed reading, increase your reading speed by, you know, 200% in three hours. And he had overwhelming demand for it even though he didn't even have any idea on how to do that and then he <laughs> made it up and he made tons of money so you know that's that's the way to do it he learned that just from fucking around 
Um, so like for us, we take those initial little steps. We're not successful. We got to recalibrate, do some analytics and figure out what can we improve upon. So for instance, like a person puts a post on that Facebook group of almost 600,000 people. I think it's over 600,000 people. And I've noticed this. Some people get several thousand likes and hundreds of comments and they don't even fucking say anything that is relevant. Seriously. It's like, I I read the, I'm like, this is, I'm only liking it because I'm supportive and I don't actually like this. And I I do think that numbers attract likes. So if you have already like a hundred, 200, you're more inclined to like it and you're more critical if it's under that. So it's like double digits or single digits, you're more critical and you're actually going to read it. So it's like, how do you get something to take off? Like, what is it that these people are saying? Is it because they're beautiful? And, you know, you got a bunch of horny dudes that, you know, want to hook up with this beautiful woman. And so they're like saying nice comments. I mean, that could be it. And that's what gives the initial momentum. Uh, Are they saying something insightful? that makes sense are they saying something that's great or or sad and what i found by looking at you know i I would say several hundred different posts is that i have no fucking idea there's no rhyme or reason to it um there are some that are super impressive like this guy, veteran, got out. I mean, he was only a three-year veteran, got out. But, you know, he's has a million-dollar income building houses for people and, and teaching people that skill set. I mean, that's really cool. And he has big muscles and he looks cool. So, you know, he has several mm-hmm. thousand likes and lots of comments. I, I commented. I said he was a beast. And, you know, good job, that kind of shit. And then there's somebody in there that's like, I'm going to fucking kill myself when my last cat dies. And it's just like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Several thousand likes and supporting symbols and hundreds of, of whatever. I, uh, when the group was 500,000 strong, was fucking terrified to post something on there. But I did. And, you know, I, I, I told my story. This is who I am, where I came from. This is my challenge right now. And this is my solution. And, you know, I posted a picture of my face. And they're like, oh, well, looks like you got shit figured out, bro. Like, you know, good for you. <laughs> I have like under 30 likes with a group of 500,000 people. And my content was good because it's real. You know, I made it to the top. I'm successful, but I'm struggling. You figure that that, you know, a lot of people would relate to that. Um, but apparently not. And did not yeah, there's resonate. Some kind of, there's probably some like algorithm at work. Like a lot of those people might not have even been served that post, like because the algorithm decided for yes. whatever reason. I yeah, think so. so. It's not. It's not like an accurate. I, I think that's there. part of the issue. My posts are delayed, so I'll post something, and the admin won't post it, won't approve it for like seven hours. And I noticed that with my second post, where I was like, you know, sharing my overall experience of the event and thanking people for being present, like immediately when it was done, it wasn't until the next day that it was approved. I mean, it completely <laughs> missed the mark. And the ones that got it out there that were approved right away, several thousand likes, comments, yeah. discussions, completely missed it. So mm-hmm. is it me? Is it the message? Is it the people? Or is it the exposure? Is it the algorithm? Is it making it to people's feeds? I never thought of that, Richard, that last part. Is it yeah. making it to people's feeds? Because if it doesn't make it to their feed, like their home and pop up like as it as one of the first three or four updates, they're not going to see it because yeah. there's millions of posts in that group now. No one's okay. A million posts, likely if not two million posts. Yeah. No one's scrolling down anymore to check out my posts. <laughs> there's too fucking many, right? So <laughs> if 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 it's not popping up anymore. And it never popped up enough in the beginning to get that initial attraction. And there's the issue. So does the same thing work with like videos going viral? What causes a video to go viral outside of it being very good 
I mean, it could be really good and shared, but is that really what does it? Or is it because somebody behind Facebook says, you know, that's a really cool cat video. I'm going to put that front and center. Because if they do that, you see on your feed a video, like it has like a quick one, two, three second replay, one, two, three second, and you're like, okay, that seems interesting. I'll click it. If they do that for you, you're going to get massive exposure, even if your video had no likes to begin with or no views. If they put it front and center, you're going to get a tremendous amount of views. They may not even like the video. There's videos up there. I'm like, why the fuck is this up here? It's trash. And I think the algorithm is not even like per post or per video. It's like, uh, like if they identify a user as someone who posts a lot and is engaged with the platform, they'll promote that user's posts just to make that person more engaged. But if you're like someone who only posts once, then the website knows like, you know, if they, if they shower your post with likes, you might, you're not necessarily someone who's going to be engaged every day. But if like, you know, if someone posted like a hundred times that day, then if they shower that person with likes, they get more engagement from someone who's like more engaged. So then it's not even uh, like, it's not even like the quality of the one post. It's like the user behavior over time. Cause I've heard popular YouTube creators, they'll say like, as long as they post one video a day, which is like insane. If they post one video a day, the algorithm, like their videos will get lots of likes. But if they miss a day, then all of a sudden, like no matter how good their next video is, it gets like half the likes because the algorithm immediately like, like the algorithm likes it when you're producing one video a day and it's showing it to like people. Uh, but if you miss a day, then it'll, you'll start getting like punished for like not keeping up that pace of like content. I don't know how true that is. Is that anymore, YouTube? But yeah, that was at least a couple of years ago. YouTube was sort of working like that. Like I was hearing that from people on podcasts. Uh, amazing experience yeah amazing because if i'm gonna start getting my piano out there i can make something every day really quick rapid fire like really really quick and it'd be decent and it could be something random every day this is what i made it today. gets to be a pretty like a grind i think yeah it's people say they they burn out you know just trying to upload every day but i feel like uh it's pretty competitive i think i think it's good to just pick like a sustainable schedule like once a week twice a week at most and just do something really sustainable and then you know get like get your audience used to like a video will drop every week and you can rely on it and watch it and you know just have people build up that way and come to uh rely on you know this weekly song or something and but it takes yeah. a while to like it takes a while to build up the numbers but i actually have the ability to create a song every day richard and it takes me like, it, I can do it really quick, and it'd be yeah. decent too. So like, what so what's hard for me is the recording. So if I can make it raw, camera set up, looking at the piano, I play it once, play it twice, get it, trim the video because I played it nice, and put that up. I mean, that could be a daily thing, and then you know I'll pick out like. Every week, I'll pick up my favorite one, and I will create an actual, like, properly mastered using MIDI and have a song a week doing that. And it could be a combination. Like, I could, I could pick a key, key signature a week, create these different segments, and then combine the segments at the end of each week into an official song. That could be my thing. That's what I could do. Yeah, I, guess it, I guess the thing is like mm. if you enjoy if you enjoy that then you've won already it doesn't it doesn't matter i do like it or yeah it's so I mean, just... if you're just if you're doing that for you if you're doing it for like archival purposes like your uh, future relatives will have that you know forever hopefully to of just these videos of stuff you've made if you listen to it in the future then or if you just like the act of holding yourself to that schedule and producing that stuff and if that brings value then that's the best thing because then you you can't lose like you've already won the moment you've did it and then it and then anything else that happens is extra like you know any amount of like zero likes or you know a bunch of likes or a good a decent amount of likes is all just uh extra stuff that is not really needed to add more enjoyment or something because the thing is it's, it's not only creating the content it's getting it out there and if what's going to get it out there is the exposure because of the algorithm then that's the thing to do 
create the content to get it out. Um, well, if my uh, if my carrot video goes viral, uh, we can do a remix where you add like a background soundtrack to the carrot video. <laughs> <laughs> sure, man. Sure. I mean, that's an idea. But this is neat because we're brainstorming. You know, before this, I wouldn't even have dreamed of recording our chats and allowing it to go public. And here we are brainstorming potential futures online, real content. The, the danger is by talking about it, we're giving ideas to people that they could just take and use. But then again, you know, people get ideas all the time and don't follow through with it because it's work. A lot of people don't like to work. Yeah. And like, uh, I don't know how many piano composers are out there to be able to steal my idea or have the ability to do what I do. I don't know. Um, I think it's good. There's at least one guy out there that's called like Song a Day, man. He, he produces like one song a day. Some of them are good. Fuck. So the idea is already stolen, I guess, with different but he, Well, gonna... he's kind of, yeah, I mean, he's proved the concept, I would say. So people are used to that idea. So then like if you do it, then it's already like, you know, it's not this new thing that you have to get into the market. It's like, you know, I guess in some sense that guy's proved there's a market for it. So if you just do your own spin on it, yes, that's that same market will. And I, I can even talk to the guy and like what what is what are his best practices? What has he done? So, you know, I can learn from it, not copy him, but have a different stream. Uh yeah, or, like, it'll best- be parallel to uh, his best music is like uh, in collaboration with like a convention or something like he'll like he went to like a conference and he wrote like a song or actually, no, it was Apple. Like Apple does those like press releases where they release like their new software, like, I don't know, once a year. And he like he wrote a song about the new Apple software and then it went like viral inside the Apple like kind of community. And he's done that with a lot of different communities. Like he'll write a song that will appeal to like one community. And then that community will like, you know, have this song that he like wrote for them and they'll start sharing it around. So then he, so he's kind of like, he'll, you know, pick something that's happening, the news or whatever, and he'll like latch onto that. And then the song becomes viral because it's riding on top of this other wave or something. Fascinating. Yeah, I'd have to figure out because that's one thing. If I do it daily, it has to be connected to something. Something has to, if I can link it to something, um, that might be a, a way too. I like what he's done. But I think what we yeah. can do differently is I have the one key, key signature a week and then I can have in the description what the key signature is. People can see the different ways I'm playing it how I create the song at the end and they can hear the familiar parts. And that could be, I think that could be, yeah, you know, well, my particular style. Yeah, That's it could good. be my yeah, style. The value, too. yeah, is like people who want to, like people who appreciate what you're doing, if you reveal sort of like the process, it makes them feel like maybe they could do it and it's empowering. Yeah, and it will be different every week. It will just... And that would get me on the piano and want to do it. It just, it's the setup. Uh, I guess it's time to get a full. Yeah. Yeah, it's time well, to get a I, gra- That's uh, why yeah, I, I emphasize like low, you know, le- as little energy as possible, lowest quality possible. Get, just create something that like someone else can find. Like, it's because you, you can go, like, as soon as you cross that boundary from you have zero online presence, no one can find anything to like, there's, there's any way anyone could find the thing you did. That's an important threshold to cross. And the quality, like, doesn't matter at all. Just put anything up there. And then, like, and then you've crossed into this realm where it's, like, someone might find that and get value from it versus, like, an impossibility. And then there's, then it's just a challenge of what you have out there, just make it better rather than, like, go from zero to something. So, yeah. I, don't know, I really promote this idea of just, like, like just do any like play one note, record, upload to YouTube, random title, and then now you have your first video done. Now it's just about like the second video kind of thing, and just put more than one note, you know, and then it's <laughs> getting the process <laughs> done for sure. Yeah, um, 
and that's another idea from that I've kind of gathered from the four hour four hour work week. You know, before you even come up with like a a product you want to sell, come up with like how you're gonna store, distribute it, like come up with a full plan before you create a product. Like the product's like the last thing you come up with. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It feels so backwards, but um, but yeah, like what you're saying is, you know, just understand what the process is before you start creating the content. For me, I've been very much like just fashion out songs and I, I put them on Reverb Nation and they're not, some of them are like crisp and there's no mistakes and the other ones are you know raw and some of them are just horrible quality like sound wise, but uh, like I have two that I haven't put up yet because I wanted to actually record properly, but it's just I keep getting held back by fear, procrastination, and shit like that. Because yeah, I don't want to make any excuses. I'm tired of them. But yeah, I have you know, the same thing. Yeah, do... like I have lack of lack of energy and fear and all that stuff. Yeah, and I just combat it by like doing making content for the little least amount of energy possible, and just it's almost like it. a challenge. Of... Yeah, finding ways to do it almost with no energy and uh, with no fear just because it's... Yeah. yeah. Once you're set up... See, my thing is my setup, I got to tear down and put back up. Because I need like an actual studio, I think. If I had a studio, everything's set up all the time, then it, you know, that facilitates things. And you know, part of that is having my own personal laptop, I think. I got a shit laptop that crashes. I got a work laptop that doesn't let me download stuff. So it's like... You know, I need to get the resources in place to do this and move forward. Uh, there was something else, too. Shit, what was it? It's tough, uh, though. I, like, I think, I don't know, for me, it's like, because sometimes I'll have, you know, I'll set things up in a more permanent way, and I end up just coming up with, like, different excuses. And then, uh, like, it maybe it just... The effect it has is it raises the quality bar a little bit. If I have like a ready to go setup, then then there's no like, you know, like like let's say I had like a perfectly soundproof room for doing audio recording, then the quality of the audio that I did produce would be good. But I don't know. I don't think I would like get more content out there if I had like a permanent recording studio. Uh, what I found actually was these AI generated voices. Like now I'll just like, I'll throw random text into these AI generate voice generators. And then I'll use that to make a video, but I only, that only works because it's so easy and you can get, you can get like a voice talking and some imagery from AI generation and then make a video that way. And that's interesting. That's really, still, like, that's really cool. Effort. Yeah. That's totally an idea, man. I like that. Um, and then, yeah, then it makes me like, you know, once I have these a crappy AI videos, then I'm like, well, let's make like a good one, you know? And then all I have to do is like correct you know, make these videos improve their quality rather than do a video from scratch and try to make it perfect or something. Yeah. So, like, that's my thought there. So, I, I have stuff on Reverb Nation. I got lots of songs up there. A lot. The thing is, it's like, that's a, it's, that's a community just on Reverb Nation, and I think it's dead. I, I don't know. I don't think I get any more listens. I don't think people are really checking out other people's stuff. I think everything is on... The, the main platforms like YouTube and Spotify. I think that's where things are going. So, you know, I, I've put stuff up there of, you know, low to high quality, but it's not getting exposure. So getting out there was the first step. I lost momentum. I lost motivation. And I stopped doing it for quite a long time. So, you know, the willpower wasn't there. The willpower wasn't there for very personal reasons. I mean, there was a bit of trauma involved from 2009. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting back on the horse. And I'm realizing that my first attempt was just not successful. I should be proud of myself for trying, but I needed a whole new approach. And we talked about a way to do it. But I got to be able to create films. I gotta, people want to see the artists. People want to see what they're doing. Not just listen to the sound. I mean, that's part of it, but you know, the videos. People want to see what's happening, and you know, I got to set up for that, and I got to learn how to edit, and I got to learn how to put it up there. And I would like to see you make like YouTube shorts, 
uh, YouTube shorts are like videos that have to be less than one minute and they have to be shot from like portrait mode in a phone. And they're like one minute videos. Uh, and they get, if you go on YouTube, there's like, when you scroll down the page, you'll see like these series of one minute videos. They're called like YouTube shorts. They're kind of like, uh, like a TikTok length. And uh, the idea for that would just be like, put your phone on a tripod, uh, start the video recording and have it like aim so that you can see you sitting at the piano. And then just like, you know, hit video record. The beginning of the video even would be like you like moving away from the camera, sitting down, just play for like a minute and then uh, hit end. And then I think in the YouTube app, you can like trim it. It lets you trim like the video or actually there's video editing trimming ability on like the phone. And then just like mm -hmm. upload those, upload one of those a day. Like basically just like, like for one minute, just like walking by the piano, just like sit down, phone in place, hit video, play for one minute, hit upload, and just once a day, like do that. Yeah. And then that was that was an idea, and there was a tripod with a light at Costco for the longest time, and I should have bought it, seventy bucks. And I got a work phone. It's an iPhone twelve. Mine's an eight. Better camera. I was thinking about getting the work phone using that. Why not? I mean, I'm able to put my own personal sim in it. I'm sure I can take videos. Um, you know, like I got the tech. Just it's now the well. I guess. Uh, the limitation is, you know, I have a grand piano, it is 96 years old, so it's not, it's decent quality, but it's not Yamaha quality. So, I don't want to make an excuse of, like, you know, my piano isn't perfect, so I don't want to do it. I do want to have a better piano, but I don't think I'm going to let that hold me back. You know, I'll get it Yeah, tuned. the title, I think there's value in that title. If you say, like, I play this song on a 97 year old piano and it's a one minute youtube short i feel like that title is kind of like clickbaity people will be like oh like you know 100 year old piano or something and they'll just it is it, it, you know it, yeah. it honestly is it's like from the toronto piano making company that shut down when yamaha came to canada so you know i can maybe even put that history into it as well but eventually i do want to get myself like state-of-the-art uh, state of the art piano. I can see that's one of my goals too. Maybe I'll be supported. Who knows? Yeah, I'll put that in my uh, my bio. So these are things now. Like we have these ideas. It's now following through and doing it, and you know, holding yourself accountable. And another thing I got from the Art of Living from Tony Robbins is do it now. You talk about something, something you really want to do. Don't wait until tomorrow or the next day. Do it right away. Now, I got to go to bed, I got responsibilities, but instead of me humming and hawing about it and creating this long timeline and giving myself a month to do it, if you do it right away, you get it done. And he gave a little, you know, personal story about his daughter going into acting and the daughter was hesitant and afraid and fear of holding her back and he, he forced her to go. He's like, you're going to go. And... You know, if she was successful, not every story is going to end up that way. But if you don't try, you're going to miss the shot. So, yeah, yeah, man, I, I yeah. think, uh, you know, I still got to rewatch the video. Um, you know, I was distracted quite a bit, but there was a lot to take away from it that reinforces a lot of what I think I know already. And I think it's the same for a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of reinforcing of what we believe in. There's a lot of new. And then there's some stuff I don't agree with. But it is what it is. Yeah. So any final thoughts, man? I'm a little over time. No, yeah, that's good. Uh, I need to buy carrots. That's the only thing that's stopping me from <laughs> making that carrot video. <laughs> but I'm actually going to try to make that carrot video. Because that was an idea I had a while ago. But I got like... I thought I couldn't do it well enough. But I'm just going to go... I'm going to do... I'm just going to like post some video. That's my goal. Uh, and that's a great goal to have, man. Just, just doing the process. Carrots. The second that I own carrots, I will have posted <laughs> that video. <laughs> uh, when I'm in Costco next, I'm going to look for that tripod. And I'm going to, you know, maybe you give me some ideas offline about some good video editing software on a phone. Um, but yeah, taking the steps and actually like doing them. Like I sent a song. No. My, my buddy Melissa 
came across my songs on my Facebook wall. She's like, this needs to go on YouTube. Like, you got to expose yourself now. Yeah. And I got enough people telling me, my brother said that, she said that. And it's like, okay, I got enough pe- people telling me that they're interested and they want to see it. So there is going to be a market for it, for my style. There's tons of pianists out there. I have a style. I play a certain way. So I'm excited, man. Like, I, I think this is what I need to do. And I've, I've been too afraid to do it for too long. So time to take action. Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's a good note to end on. (laughs) All right, dude. Take care. Yeah, I'll see you. Bye-bye.